Good morning, thank you for coming. So, <coughs> today I'm going to talk about uh, free communication on the desktop and specifically, uh, specifically I'm going to uh, talk about the telepathy project. Um, for those of you that don't know me, a um, few words about myself. I'm an old KD and telepathy contributor. Um, I started back in 2009 with the Google Summer of Code project uh, related to KD telepathy. And nowadays I work on GStreamer, totally different. Um, however, last year I was kind of bored. I wanted to do something um, else apart from GStreamer. And um, I started looking at well, communications because it's something that bothers me when I work. Um, communication is kind of hard. So. Um, one problem is that basically nowadays all the communication happens on the mobile. Um, we have, I have like three, four different apps on my phone to talk to different people and that kind of sucks. And uh, when, um, when I'm on the computer and I want to talk to them, I, the, the best way to do that is to just open their respective websites because all of them have web apps. <laughs> So I load my browser with three, four different tabs of um, heavy websites and um, all that just to, to talk to some people. Um, so, yeah, it bothers me that there is no good way to do that on the desktop. Um, and, uh, of course, there are some um, open source applications uh, on the desktop that are quite okay to use, but um, some of them, they are for specific protocols, um, some of them, I, I like for example, Pidgin or um, similar things, um, they are okay, but I don't really li like, like them. So I was looking at um, telepathy again. And I thought, yeah, why, why not? Why is this project dying? Um, so yeah, I, maybe you've heard of that project before. Um, what is it? It's um, basically it's implementing. It's a framework implementing instant messaging as a desktop service. Um, every protocol backend is a different process, and. Um, all the um, communication with the user interfaces is done through Dbus. And you can have, of course, more than one user interface sharing the same connection uh, because of, the, of this architecture. This graph is quite old. I know MSN doesn't exist. <laughs> I was too lazy to change it. <laughs> so a quick history lesson about the project. It started around 2005, 2006, I think. It was developed actively for the Nokia's MIMO and MIGO platforms. Um, at some point, empathy and KD telepathy kicked in, um, the two um, respective user interfaces for GNOME and KD. Um, but the project was stalled around 2013. Um, and it was the point where people were working on releasing version 1.0, which was about Clean, clean up API and doing some porting, which I, I'll talk about later. Um, where are my notes? So yeah, when I joined last year, um, I tried to see what's the state, and I saw that. There, is, there was activity all these years in Telepathy Qt, in the Telepathy Qt library, which is the Qt um, API to talk to the Dbus services. Um, and there are people that were writing and still are uh, working on those uh, Qt-based connection managers. Um, connection managers are the processes that actually implement the protocols, right? And um, they provide us this um, connection to the user interface. Um, there are, um, like, we have these connection managers, Qt-based connection managers at the moment, with Telepathy Morse for the Telegram protocol. 
uh, telepathy nonsense, um, which is an effort to redo uh, the XMPP connection with a Qt API. Um, and uh, some other uh, connection managers as well that I, I put the question mark there because I don't know what their state is, but uh, it's telepathy hanging for Hangouts, telepathy reciprocate, and telepathy bell for the ring protocol. Which there is a talk later about this one. Um, so I joined in, I saw this activity, and then I saw that the Glib site was not being um, uh, worked on. We have also telepathy Glib, uh, the Glib API to talk to the TIBA services, <coughs> and a couple of Glib-based uh, connection managers for XMPP, for IRC, for, um, I don't remember what else. And um, I started working on that a bit, um, did some releases on the Glib-based connection managers. Um, and then after discussion with um, the other guys in the project, um, we thought we should finish the 1.0 release effort because it will make things easier uh, both for us and for new contributors in the future because it, it cleans up the API a lot. Um, the API right now is a bit over-engineered, I think. And um, yeah, it, there is also some work to port telepathy glib to, to use Gbus instead of the bus glib, which is a bit painful. Um, telepathy Qt also needs some um, API rework to make it easier for people to, to use it. Um, so that, that's what, what's happening now. Um, we also recently moved the repositories to GitHub because it was easier for us to work there. Um, previously, we were on free desktop, and still are actually. The, the website is on free desktop. Um, repositories are also on free desktop, um, and we synch synchronize them. Um, <coughs> But yeah, the, the main development is done here. And um, there are a couple of plans for the future, like ideas we, we had that we would like to see implemented at some point. Um, implement some modern chat features which are not there, like um, being able to see server-side logs. Many protocols do that nowadays. Uh, do chat lists instead of contact lists. Um, you know the thing that you see on the on your um, WhatsApp or Messenger when you or Telegram, when you open the app, you see a list, a list of chats instead of seeing the list of contacts. Um, contacts is a very <laughs> very old idea. Um, multimedia messages as well. There is support for that, partial, but um, it, it needs some work. Um, another idea is to implement a, a better uh, graphical user interface, something more modern, something that corresponds more to what people um, are used to nowadays. Um, that doesn't essentially mean rewriting everything. Uh, we, we could improve the existing applications, but any, any idea is welcome. Um, do some connection managers for, for other modern protocols like Matrix um, or Tox. Um, um, also, we would like to improve compatibility with proprietary protocols because that, that's where most of the user base is. If, you, if you're not compatible with um, those, it's hard to, to keep people using it because they will always switch to something else when they want to talk to their friends that are not on uh, XMPP, for example. <laughs> um, so yeah, a couple of ideas, Skype, Team, Messenger, the, these things are, I, I think they can be somehow connected. Um, and also another thing that I would like to see is reduce project fragmentation. Right now I know there are um, patches around in um, selfie shows, uh, Ubuntu phone, um, mostly for the ring connection manager, which is um, the, um, the, the connection manager for the cellular protocol, the GSM protocol. Um, because these companies use this um, use telepathy in their phones, actually. And um, yeah, 
well, this all is a lot to do uh, for m me and uh, the other guys. So we need you. <laughs> um, there are a couple of tasks. Right now, we want to finish version 1.0, as I said. There is a lot of work in ma maintaining connection monitors. Um, we have Gabble for XMPP, Salute for uh, Link Local XMPP, uh, Haze, which is um, a compatibility later, uh, layer for exposing libpurple uh, protocols, so we can use whatever libpurple has on telepathy. Idle for IRC, Ring for cellular, as I said. Uh, Rakia for uh, SIP, um, which I don't know if, if the backend is being maintained. It's based on Sofia SIP, I don't think that's maintained, but anyways. <laughs> um, and yeah, we would like to also work on missing f features on the connection managers. It would be very uh, nice for, for people to have um, to be, to be compliant with XMPP um, Compliance Street 2016. Um, and also, it would be nice to be able to support more LePurple features in Haze. Right now, we want to support text chats. We could do more, and it would increase our protocol um, span a lot, because LePurple has a lot of protocols implemented. Um, Another thing that you could do is come up with a new client, I don't know, or improve one of the existing ones in a way that makes it more um, modern and more uh, appealing to users. And uh, yeah, that was everything I had to say. Any questions? Yes? Sure. Um, on um, sort of priorities and future directions, I was wondering if um, you if you're trying to do outreach to um, distinctly open communications protocol groups like the matrix thing, because uh, I think one of the problems we're trying to solve is is rather closed communication channels, and, and I understand that telepathy already supports or aims to support a wide range of protocols, but it kind of, I think maybe the best things that the core enthusiastic people and developers can do is is connect with other groups that are trying to do the same thing, like Matrix. Does that um, maybe by talking at the conference? Please repeat the question. Like. Yeah. So, if I understand the connection right, is the the question right? Is you are asking if we have a certain direction in uh, specific features that we would like to work on with with other communities? Is that what you're asking? Really, I want to uh, suggest that. Uh, um, talking to these other communities and trying to work together is a good add thing to add to your future directions. Yeah, uh, I think so, definitely. Um, it's like everything is open. Uh, we are open to discussing with other communities, of course, and that's one of the reasons I came here to give this talk is try to see what the p other people are doing, um, engage in talks and uh, maybe come up with um, very <coughs> specific directions that we could move on. I want to. Oh, <sighs> okay. Um, so, uh, does uh, telepathy have any provisions for uh, out of order messages? So, for example, Matrix is uh, not just message passing uh, protocol, it's a chat synchronization protocol. So, it's possible that, uh, like, you receive some messages and then you receive some messages in between them. Right. Because, yeah. So uh, the question is if, if telepathy supports um, um, message synchronization, uh, like matrix, that uh, some messages may come later and they may be in a different order than they actually arrive. So the, the answer is uh, no, we don't have um, good support for that. But it's something that we would like to do. It's in, in the modern features uh, pool that we would like to implement because, yes, it's essential that we support things like that. OK, so what I wanted to add, because I heard mm -hmm. this, uh, Sophia mentioned, I think, the guy that free switch 
either fork it or they embed it, but I think they are still using it and eventually improving. I'm not sure if Giovanni is more... Uh, Giovanni, you know the state of uh, Sophia C with free switch is imported and embedded or...? Is, uh, Sophia is uh, imported and uh, we are uh, putting a lot of effort uh, into updating it, uh, fixing bugs, uh, making it most callable, etc. More or less uh, in the, uh, let's say, in the original project, what you find uh, in the SDN is uh, not so much in flux, so let's say it's kind of stale. But uh, we're using uh, uh, really a lot of effort mm -hmm. to it. So let's say that uh, uh, our version uh, is much more, uh, uh, let's say, as much more work uh, than uh, that one that uh, is uh, still uh, like Nokia left it uh, okay. in those days. And so uh, feel free to, uh, to interact uh, with uh, our people, particularly with uh, uh, Michael Jerry's uh, or, uh, or Tony. Uh, about uh, the Sofia stack, and uh, I think that uh, you'll be maybe better served to use uh, our version uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. is uh, kept uh, completely compatible uh, with the original one, so you don't right. have to do uh, any particular work for it. Okay, so the, this was not a question, it was an intervention that Sofia SIP is uh, still being worked on in the Free Switch project. And yes, we would we will um, definitely come to that when we bring this. That's a, s a small question. I saw you mentioned a lot of uh, extra plugins or something like that, like Rakia. Uh, I don't remember exactly. And uh, one of them was a plugin to interact with already existing code base from Pigeon Project. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's time to. I, I, I see you have a very small uh, developers in your in your group and your team. Maybe it's time to cut off an um, extra mm -hmm. while re implementing the same things and just focus on that plugin which allows you to work with a, let's say, arguably bigger code base, bigger, uh, more vital project like PyPidon. Yes, yes, it's, it's one option. Um, well, well, the if you take a look around, people are uh, saying this is an old code base, this is not maintained anymore. And if you take a look at what state of plugins at the free, free disk of project org, I see some of them have violated git commit years ago. So maybe it's mm -hmm. time to cut them off, just move forward. Yes, so the, the, the intervention was that maybe it's um, better to focus on uh, telepathy haze, which brings protocols from libpurple um, because libpur because it yeah it, it basically cuts down our uh, maintenance and uh, makes us uh, use very updated code base um, I agree in in some degree yes it, it, I I like to have um, <coughs> haze um, support more things and focus and use libpurple more because that exactly what you said um, but I, I don't want to, to stop there because we can we can do more. But you, you won't attract new developers in that way because they will ask you why not to come contribute to LibPurple or rather contribute to your own pet projects which will never reach the same level of functionality. So you are actually effectively cutting off the. The the, the, the I think the um, the reason is that. Some people may not be comfortable in coding in glib and libpurple, and that, that's that's why. I mean, um, people who work on um, the Telegram connection manager right now, they, they use Qt. They are Qt developers, so I, I can't tell them to just go, just stop doing that, go to libpurple. It's not, I don't think it's good. We also need developers to code a UI. Mm -hmm. One way. Yes. Yes. There is no yes. need to code the UI if you don't have a proper functionality underneath. Yeah. And, and, and also, there is a problem that uh, Lit Purple and Telepathy uh, have different feature sets. So, uh, 
Uh, the program doesn't cover uh, all the features uh, that needed uh, in telepathy. For example, I was looking at the uh, uh, purple uh, support for Skype, and it can uh, support uh, your own messages. I mean, uh, if, for example, you send a message from another client, you won't see this message in the uh, a client uh, that uh, works through the purple. Skype is a different story, I suppose. <laughs> but, uh, well, guys, I'm sorry, but you're going to have to take the discussion. Oh, okay. Because um, time is up. Thank you for your okay. talk. Thank you.